Hi, this is the second lecture on connectedness. This is part of a series on topology. In the last lecture, we define a space, topology space X is connected if the only sets which are both open and closed simultaneously are the empty set and the full space X. Using this definition, we looked at a list of our standard examples like a discrete, indiscrete, a cofinite topology, cocoon double topology, VIP topology, outcast topology, and order topology and R2, etc. And also we showed that R with the usual topology is connected. Okay. Right. The last thing is very important, of course. So the first th examples, okay, set of examples, they're all very good. Okay. It just gives an idea how to work with in an axiomatic set theoretic setup. But the real tough problems here are when we have to look at some geometrically arising subsets of some Rn, there are Rn with the usual topology. Okay, like let's say an ellipse, F sphere in R3, okay, R of a plane in R3, like that, okay, R set of all singular matrices in, in, a, in the space of square matrices, these kinds of things are difficult. And in modern mathematics, these are the examples which are very needed, very much needed. And so students who go through the general points of topology have no idea whether even a sphere is connected or not. Okay, I have seen such examples, right? So what our plan today is to look at some geometrically arising subsets or naturally arising subsets of R, later R2. Okay, this is going to be a short lecture we will just look at only concentrate on these things okay all right let's get started yeah please someone uh, subscribe to my youtube video and my request is whoever sees this watches this videos please watch it once again and prepare a timestamp create a timestamp for this this will help others also this is the one way you can uh, what you call appreciate to show your appreciation for my work okay so let us uh, quickly recall various things so i have a space to apply space x tau and this is connected if and only if the only sets which are simultaneously open and closed are empty set at x okay good right so with this we have seen as i said in, in the introduction we have seen an example we had already seen r with the usual topology is connected right now we want to look at some more examples of subsets of R okay let's look at our standard thing set of yeah we also looked at this example all of you might know let's look at R star this is a subset A, A subset of R we have seen is con not connected what is R star? Non-zero reals. Why is it not connected? Let's look at the idea. So suppose this is your zero. Okay, I removed it. Okay. Then what did you find? I to show it's not connected, what do I have to do? I have to produce an S at U, which is not empty. Okay, and which is not equal to X, but U must be open as well as closed right i have to check whether there exists such a u but what was our example i said for example take zero infinity or minus infinity is zero as u right then what did you find this said this is already open in r r right therefore it's intersection u intersection x where x is our r star okay is u therefore this is open and similarly this is open 
but remember r star is a disjoint union of u union u complement u complement and r star that is 0 to infinity union minus infinity is 0 all right therefore this is also open this is also open that means this is closed therefore this set is not empty not equal to x and open and closed therefore we know that r star is not connected this i think we had already seen in the last example okay please go through it but learn this well because we are going to use it now now let's look at the subset a this is example 2 which is q you know subset of r where r with the usual topology i want to know that he is connected okay and your i think most of you can guess right this is your number line R star is going to be something various thing, okay. Q, the set of rationals in two till I should think it's not connected. So, to do that, what is the way, way? Let us look at how did this work in the R star? You looked at a zero which is not in R, and then that allowed us to find uh, two open sets U and V, right? So, what is the thing here you can do? So, I want an element which is not in Q. So all of us will choose obvious choice will be root 2. So, so let's look at root 2. Right. Now let's look at the set U which is minus infinity to root 2. I claim this is open in R and hence U intersection Q is open in Q. Do you agree with that? Why is this a Now let's look at the other set V, which is root 2 to infinity. This is again open in R with the usual topology. And hence V intersection Q is open in Q. And notice that my Q is the design union of U intersection Q union V intersection Q. This is open in Q. And this is also open in Q. That means this is both. So U intersection Q is open and closed where in Q. Right? And is it it's not empty? Why it's not empty? I for example minus one belongs to this. Or zero belongs to this. Therefore it's not empty. Right? This is not empty. And it's not equal to X. Why? I can take square root 2 plus 1 okay that will be in in Q sorry I'm very sorry I take 2 which will be in Q minus U right you understand that therefore this is not equal to X so U intersection Q is not empty and it's not equal to X but it's both open and closed therefore what do you conclude? Q is not connected. Yeah, very good. Now let's look at a third example. Okay, let's look at set of integers. A is set of integers in R. Now remember when do I say subset A of a topology space X tau is connected? We say if A with the subspace topology is connected. Right? Now what is the subspace topology? R is with the usual topology, therefore what is the subspace topology? On Z, I know it's a discrete. Right? Because I have any element n, then I can choose n minus half to n plus half. Okay, and intersect with z that will be singleton n. Therefore, each singleton set in z is open. Therefore, this is discrete topology. 
and this discrete and z is has more than one element so we had already seen a discrete space with more than one element is not connected therefore z is not connected i hope all of you understand okay right okay now let us look at i want to claim the following thing if a is a subset of r and if a is not an interval a is not connected okay this is our uh, uh, fourth example third or fourth whatever it is but many of you this is a one subtle thing you have to learn when you did real analysis intermediate reality theorem etc okay the teacher should have taken pains to define an interval all of you know when i give a set whether it's an interval or not you know how to write a very general form of interval but there is an intrinsic characterization of intervals in real analysis okay that one has to learn if you want to do intermediate reality theorem connectedness later also you should know an interval can be defined not by listing all possible intervals so i say a subset a of r is an interval okay this is my definition if for every x comma y in a and for every z so that x less than z less than y then z is also in a what does it mean whenever i take two points in a and if z is an point in between those two points then z also must be in a right understand that yeah so with this definition you can find out what are the standard intervals what you call you can list all of them you can refer to my either a, a real analysis book uh, ajit kumar and kumarison or you can look into my topology of metric spaces where i proved these things okay what do i prove with this we write down all possible intervals if it's a finite interval it must be other form open a b or closed a b open at a closed at b or closed at a open at b and when 100 infinite interval it should be something like minus infinity a or a to infinity with a closed or open you understand these are all the possible intervals okay pause review proceed okay now let's go back to the th thing we want to prove suppose a is a subset of r and a is not an interval what does that mean that man this man there exists infinite series for only if there exists x y in a and there exists z so that x is less than z less than y with z not in a do you understand this so let us look at the picture again so i have this i have x and y maybe this is y this is x i don't care okay there is a z okay this z is x and y okay this belongs to a this belongs to a but this does not belong to a right now if you had gone through our earlier examples of r star or q how we proved they are not connected do you think you can th think of 
can you think of a set u a subset of a such so that u is open and closed in a and u is not equal to empty set u is not equal to a can you think of obvious right let us look at minus infinity to z okay this is open where in r therefore minus infinity to z intersected with a this will be open in the suspect topology of a therefore call this as u right okay this is open is it empty x belong to u because z is x is less than z therefore x belong to u therefore u is not empty right and is e equal to x e equal to a no u is not equal to a why because y is greater than a z and y by definition is not in u and hence is not in a okay it's not in here therefore it's not in u okay therefore what is that u is non-empty not equal to x and it's open I claim it's closed. Why it's closed? Look at this set Z to infinity. This is open where in R. And therefore Z to infinity intersection A. This is open in A. Right? And this is that clear? Yeah. Therefore risk and notice that my A is union of minus infinity to Z intersection A and union of z infinity intersection a right and this is a design union that means this is the complement so this set is open its complement is also open and hence this set is closed therefore this set u is not empty not x open as well as closed Therefore, we conclude if A is not connected. Okay, I hope all of you understood that. Okay, right. Now, the next question is if a is a subset which is not an interval it's not connected so naturally what is the next question you would like to ask whether any interval is connected you understand that that's a very natural question so let us give first uh, look at this first case what we want to prove is the theorem okay any interval of the form a b is connected this is a closed and bounded interval connected in R. Connected subset of R. Yeah. Okay. We still have to prove any interval is connected. We do not know. But I am going to prove if you give me any closed and bounded interval AB, I am going to show it is connected. Okay. And if you have gone through uh, my proof of intermediate value theorem, which uses a Levy property, the same argument is what I am going to use here. But I know many students are not very, very clear about the LUB. Okay, definition of LUB, how to use it, what is the LUB property, etc. Because in real analysis, it's always given a short drift. Okay, so let us quickly recall that and I'll come to the proof. So I have a subset A of R. I assume always non empty. I say alpha in R is an upper bound. A if for all x in A x is less than or equal to alpha. Therefore, I have an alpha. Where do I find elements of x? If I, if you give an element here, let us say z, okay, which is strictly greater than alpha, then z is not going to be in A. So any element of A must be here, right? So when I say alpha is not an upper bound, what does it mean? That means if I give an alpha, it's not an upper bound. That means there exists an x 
in a which is strictly greater than a greater than alpha yeah this is just logic okay if it is a first time you are looking at please review this now suppose a okay so i say a is bounded above in r if there exists alpha in r so that alpha is an upper bound right so the most important thing is the so called lb i say a real number alpha is the I, this is unique i will not try to prove it here you have to look at my videos or book A U one. Say it is like something like a shortest boy in the class. That means he must be a boy in the class, and he must be shortest among the boys. You understand? So least upper bound is that alpha is an upper bound, and it's a least among upper bound. That means if beta is an upper bound of A, then what should be the relation between alpha and beta? alpha i want to be the least among upper bound therefore alpha must be less than or equal to beta don't write alpha less than less than or equal to okay now the lb property of r says the following if a is a non empty subset of r which is bounded above in r then there exists an alpha on r said so that alpha is the lb of a that is whenever you can say there is an upper bound when i say it's bounded above what does it mean i can find an upper bound so if you assure me there is an upper bound for a then lb property assures you there exists a real number which is the least upper bound of alpha this is the most crucial okay fulcrum or pivot of real analysis okay it's a heart of analysis without there is no real analysis in fact there is no analysis in my opinion okay okay pause review proceed if this is the first time you are looking at lub upper bound etc please stop and review this i'm going to use this yeah definition of lub and definition of thing but before going let us also yeah i should have do that suppose if we give a beta in r i say beta is not and okay no no sorry suppose alpha is a lb of a and beta is a number less than alpha then what do i know is among all upper bounds alpha is the least if beta is less than that therefore that means beta is not an upper bound Okay. that means when beta is not an upper bound of a what does it mean that means there exists x in a so that this is my picture alpha this is beta there exists an x which is strictly greater than beta so this is the very important okay this is the only way you can use lb when you give me hypothesis some real number is lb of a set okay how to exploit that fact this is the only way that is you look for a beta which is strictly less than alpha then there exists an x okay for every x then there is a b thing which they may depend upon beta in a so that x is greater than beta okay so you can see if you learn real analysis well i this 10 minutes i could have saved okay <laughs> but life is like that only yeah okay now let's go to the proof suppose i have a b i want to say it's connected 
right so to show it's connected what is it i have to do i will say that suppose you give me a set a u which is a subset of a b and assume u is not empty and assume that u is both open and closed then what should i prove remember the only connected space connected space meaning the only sets which are both open and closed are empty set and the full space now you say the u is both open and closed and it's also non empty then what should it be it should be all of ab right you understand so this is what we want to prove so what is that we are do so let u a subset of ab non empty open and closed in ab in the subspace topology then i have to prove u is all of ab this is the style idea of the proof right okay now i want to say with with a loss of generality i can assume a belong to u you remember u is non empty all right you want to may wonder why i have to assume that that's very good idea suppose you take a b minus u since this is u is non empty this one this will also be closed and open it's a closed as well as open do you understand that and they are disjoint union therefore my u is sorry ab is the union of u union ab minus u this is a disjoint union right therefore a must be either in this or in this do you understand that yes or no right so suppose a is here in the second one okay call this as b if a is in b what do i know about b b is not empty and it's both open and close and it's cannot be all of the interval ab why because u is not empty therefore this cannot be all of you understand that therefore b is open closed not empty and not equal to ab is it okay open and closed we already saw why it's open and closed and this is non empty because i assume a is in b you understood and it's not equal to ab if it's ab what does it mean that u is empty but my assumption is u is non empty are you following therefore either u or b must have a right therefore and what are the properties of u and b each one of them is non empty it's not the full set ab and it's they are each is open and closed you understand so there exists at least one set u which is not open sorry which is not empty which is not all of ab which is open and which is closed right therefore so please pass review proceed so assume that a is in u next please begin to think do not simply assume what i am saying this is my a this is my b remember a belong to u and u is open where in ab what does it mean there is an open set in r call it u u tilde in r this is open so that u tilde intersection ab is u right now since are you following since a belong to u a belong to u tilde and u tilde is open that means there exists an epsilon so that a minus epsilon to a plus epsilon is contained in u u tilde do you follow that yeah therefore this means there exists epsilon positive so that a minus epsilon to a plus epsilon intersection with a b okay this is contained in u because this is contained in u tilde therefore its intersection a b is contained in u tilde intersection a b but that's u 
okay please begin to think these are the small small things you know you just you just try don't try to memorize okay you understood why this happens very good so let us look at the picture again i have a b so i have up to a plus epsilon therefore there exists epsilon positive so that a to a plus epsilon open is contained in you this is what we have proved yeah pause review proceed very good therefore let us look at the interval a to a plus epsilon by 2 that is contained in you yeah right so now i am going to form a subset okay what is the subset the subset is let me call it e e is a subset of x in the interval a b so that the close interval a up to a x is contained in u what is u u is the given set what are the properties of u it's not empty it's not a b and it's both open and closed and the little a belong to capital u right so this e is not empty because a plus epsilon by 2 belong to u therefore e is not empty right now to prove the th result what do you think i have to prove look at that what is that i want to prove i want to prove u is nothing other than the interval a b let's look at e what do you think i have to assert about e remember u is already a subset of a b therefore what is that i have to prove i have to prove a b is a subset of u right look at that that means therefore it's enough to show that b belong to e we accept it very good now so e is not empty right and it's bounded above because b is an upper bound for because yeah, every element exists in the interval a b therefore x is less than equal to b right therefore every element of e is less than equal to b therefore b is an upper bound therefore by the lib property there exists a real number c that c is the lib of e yeah the first thing i want to notice is see c is a lib of e and b is an upper bound of e right therefore what is the relation between c and b c must be less than or equal to b and remember a plus epsilon by 2 is an element of e therefore what do i know a plus epsilon by 2 should be less than or equal to c but this is strictly less than e therefore my a lies between a and b my c lies between this yeah therefore c is in, in particular c is an element of the interval a b okay pause review proceed okay now c is an interval of a b right i claim c lies in u right so c is an, uh, an interval of a b and a b is union of u union u union b right c may be here or c may be here right i want to say c is in u okay so let us prove that suppose c is not in u that means c is in v where v is that's my v right and since uh, yeah, u is closed b is open as we have seen earlier right now c belong to v therefore again i know there exists a delta positive as i argued earlier so that c minus delta to c plus delta intersected with a b is contained in v do all of you accept it so in particular let's look at this example so i have a b i have a c 
okay c is less than or equal to b c can very well be b i do not know but i know c minus delta to c right the remember c is already there right c minus delta to c therefore c minus delta to c is already contained in b do all of you agree with that when I intersect with ab this part should be there yeah okay now what do you know about c c is the lb of e and what do i know about c minus delta it's strictly less than c therefore i told you how to exploit the fact the hypothesis c is the lb of you look at something less than that c minus delta is less than c therefore there exists and next in where in c so that what happens x is greater than c minus delta so let me mark it so i have an x okay and c may be greater than or equal to i don't care so c minus delta strictly less than x less than or equal to c do you follow that okay now do you see a contradiction yeah so what are the assumption i am making see c minus delta remember c minus delta to c plus delta okay c is this is open hey, actually i can make it close this is contained in the interval ab because c is already an element of the interval ab you understand right and your x is an element of e which is a sort of ab you follow that therefore c minus delta to x look at the picture okay look at this interval now what do i know is since x belong to e i know a to x is contained in u do i agree with that yeah now how many of you can see a problem now i know c minus delta to c is contained in v but let's look at c minus delta by 2 okay this may be greater than x less than x i don't care <coughs> yeah and let's not worry about you and let's not worry about okay so i have c minus delta x and c let's look at the midpoint called this z this is the midpoint what is the midpoint that is c minus delta plus x divided by 2 okay so that is in between c minus delta and x you understand that if okay therefore c minus delta so a to x is contained in u but c minus delta plus x by 2 now that is a midpoint okay you follow that yeah but this belong to c minus delta to c but that is contained in v yes yeah but what do i know z belong to a to x because c minus delta less than x less than so uh, sorry c less than less than x okay this x yeah you follow a to x is contained therefore c minus delta is also in that yeah right so do you see a contradiction now so what do i have i have c here and i have c minus delta okay and this may be by b and a up to this this is my x up to this is contained in u right and this is the point z and that is contained and here what do i have is this is contained in b you follow that so my z is in u as well as v a contradiction
so what do you think I have proved so conclusion therefore we conclude what do we conclude c is in the interval c is in the set t uh, c is in u right so c is the lev of e and uh, it has to be either in u or v if it is in v we had a problem a contradiction therefore we concluded c is in u pause review proceed good okay now i claim c equal to b again let's look at the picture this is my a this is my b suppose my c is here suppose c is less than b right but where does c belong to c belong to u right and u is open where in the interval a b so what does that mean there is an r positive so that c minus r to c plus r intersected with a b is contained in u right now since c is strictly less than b okay we can assume r is small enough so that c plus r is less than r equal to b yeah there is some r you follow that so my c minus r may be like this right so what I can assume is I can choose R small enough so that this is C minus R to C plus R. Right? Do you agree with that? Sure. Therefore, there is a R positive so that this happens. C minus R to C plus R is contained in the interval A B. Because B C plus R is less than B. Now do you see a contradiction? what is the contradiction so I have a C here I have a C minus R here and I have a C plus R here and I have a B now C minus R is less than C this is not not LUB of not an upper bound of the set E the, what does that mean there exists and X this is an E and this is my a so a to x there exists x in e so that x is strictly greater than c minus r since x is in e a to x is contained in u that's our definition of e so again a c minus r c c plus r b this is my x right now do you see that now let's look at that therefore look at the set c c plus r by 2 that is a union of a to x union c c minus r this is contained in if you want c minus r to c plus r right but this is contained in a to b now this is contained in u this is also contained in u by our assumption right therefore this is contained in u that means c plus r by 2 belong to e that's a contradiction why that's a contradiction because c plus r by 2 is strictly greater than c but c is the lub of e so this contradiction shows c less than b is not allowed it cannot happen okay please go through this right so so what have you proved so we have proved if I take a close interval a b So what I have proved 
if I take a close interval AB, I prove it's connected. What is the trick? Start with an asset U, which is open and closed in the subspace topology of the interval AB, which is also not empty. Then we wanted to prove it is all of the interval AB. How did you prove that? Since we assume with the loss of generality, A belong to U itself. Then we proved, then there is an uh, epsilon positive so that A to A plus epsilon by 2 is contained in U. Therefore, then we form the set E, set of all X in AB, so that the closed interval A to X is contained in U. And here, this is not empty because A plus E epsilon by 2 belong to U. Then what did we prove? This set is bounded above AB. Let C be the LUB, then we proved that C is an element of U. If it, it's in the complement, we are at a contradiction. Therefore, C is an element of B. Next thing, we wanted to prove C itself is B. How did you prove that? If C is not B, then I can put C minus R to C plus R. This is your C minus R, C plus R, this is your B. Right? Therefore, up to this, A to X, C plus R by 2 will be again a subset of this contradiction. So go through the proof. The proof is actually easy proof. I but the many students find it very difficult only for the reason they are not learned the LEB very well. It's a fault of the way real analysis taught. Okay. With too much of emphasis on metric spaces, people do not emphasize the LEB property. And if you have not learned it, remember, it will make you not confident about various aspects of analysis in future also. So, it's time that you go back to my videos on LUB property, LUB etc. In the real analysis thing, real number system, I have some 3 or 4 videos which make you comfortable with upper bound, lower bound, least upper bound, GLB etc. Please go through that. You will really thank me in future. Okay. So, take care. Stay safe, we'll meet again.